Hallelujah. I think I need to lower this a little. Before we blow everybody out of their seats. Glory. Hallelujah. Can you hear me over there, Doug? Can you hear? Lower it a little more. <laughs> Repent and try again. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, God works in such strange ways, but he's so cool. I need it a little bit lower. I can tell it's too loud. Hello. Everybody hear me still? Good. We did a lot of warfare this morning. It was an area building up. Lord said to me, he said, I'm sending my arm, my military into strategic places today. There's a release of God's judgment through his military that is infiltrating many places today. He didn't tell me where. He didn't say anything. He said, but pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for their protection. So, Lord, right now we lift you the military that you are sending in strategic places all over the globe. And we ask that you go before them as a consuming fire and snare their enemies in their nets while they escape safely. We ask, Father, that your anointing would rest on every single one and that their eyes would be focused, their hearts would be set, and they'd be in unity hearing the voice of the commander and the chief, obeying and protecting one another. Lord, no fear we decree, and we decree that no weapon formed against the military of the Lord shall prosper, and every attack, flood, or anything whatsoever that rise up against them will be destroyed. We ask, Lord, for victory and favor in every attack today and strategy, that you'll dismantle every anti-Christ and anti-Trump regime, anti-American and anti-Jewish regime, and every country, nation, continent, island, globally, zip code, area code, dimension, and fold, releasing the children that have been abducted into the hands of the righteous, and gathering the spoil of the wicked and a documentation of testimony against the wicked, into the military courts with activation and movement quickly. We ask for a supernatural move of your power and strategy and wisdom given to the military today as we decree victory in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Would you turn to Mark 16? Mark 16. Welcome to Sunday morning training. In verse 14. It says, later Jesus appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table. And he rebuked them. He rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. In other words, they didn't believe the testimony of many that had seen him. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. That is the commission to drive out demonic forces spiritually. That was the commission that God gave. That's why he said, they shall drive out spirits. It is a commission from the Lord. Those that hold positions of authority physically and spiritually under the demonic rule must be driven out. 
voted out. Does everybody understand? It is our responsibility as the body of Christ to drive out demonic forces and those that serve demonic forces. It's our responsibility. It's our responsibility to take territory for the kingdom of Christ. Remember, we are called to battle. Amen? Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. And our destiny is to infiltrate the world system. That means the world system. Political, judicial, everywhere. To rescue as many souls as possible. This is a warrior's mindset. And developing a warrior's mindset is different than just developing a Christian, a way of thoughts. You can be a Christian for 25 years, 30 years, or a lifetime, and never have a mindset of a warrior. And that's what's happening right now. There's many believers out there that have been sweet people. They love Jesus, but they don't have a mindset of a warrior. And this is what God is raising up here. That's why you're at this ministry, to develop a mindset of a warrior. That's the purpose. There are those who will be able to handle it and those who can't. There are those that will go to other places because they want more of love. Soulish. We're not soulish. We don't want to be of the soul. We want to be of the flesh. We want to be of the spirit. God said it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. Amen? And in developing a mindset of a warrior, it's essential. And there's a character there. It's different. There's a different focus. There's a different understanding. There's a different discernment. And Deuteronomy 18. A mindset of a warrior is always set on driving out demonic forces. <laughs> he doesn't pet them, doesn't justify them. Hello? Doesn't compromise. Hates evil. And Deuteronomy 18 and verse 9. The Lord told them, he says, when you come into the land which the Lord your God has given you, you shall not learn the, to follow the abomination of those nations. Well, we were born into a land of abominations. When we were young, nobody really, really told us what we should follow and what we shouldn't follow. Verse 10. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire or one who practices witchcraft or sorcery or soothsayer or one who interprets omens or a sorcerer or one who can conjures spirit spells or medium or spiritus or one who calls up the dead when he talks about passing your sons and daughters through the fire that's also known as abortion for all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord and because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. For these nations which you will dispossess, listen to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed you for such. And he goes on to say, I'm going to raise you up a prophet so that you can hear better. So there's a prophetic word, there's prophets that give visitations to the Lord to release things. But there's a voice of God that's within me and you. Because just the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. So there's an understanding that a warrior has, a mindset of a warrior, that the, the demonic forces and agendas, they understand not only their agendas, but their practices. They avoid these things or they attack these things. See, 
in everything that you and I do is a mindset of a warrior, you are either going to avoid something or to attack something. Does everybody understand? We don't run from nothing. We may avoid it. It's not calling run. Does everybody understand? There's no fear in a mindset of a warrior. In Ephesians 6, in verse 10. So we either do what? Avoid or attack. That's the mindset of a warrior. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Hallelujah. speak it. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or trickery of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. I want you to understand this is called the armor of God, not the armor of man. It is the armor of God. Because only the armor of God can defeat the demonic forces, not the armor of man. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in an evil day and having done all to stand. So a warrior's mindset never leaves home without getting dressed <laughs> with the armor of God. Never. Never compromises that. Never compromises his connection Making connection every morning with the Lord. Never. That's priority to a mindset of a warrior. Because he knows the powers of darkness are going to come after him all day long. They're going to set traps and everything. But out, without being dressed with the full armor of God, they won't be able to defend the influence. Defeat any of that. Does everybody understand that? Never leaves home without getting dressed with the full armor of God to overcome, defeat, or avoid traps set by the enemy. In 1 Corinthians 9. I hope we hear about all the attacks that are going on today. Infiltrations. We may hear some of them, but we don't always hear them all, do we? 1 Corinthians 9, 19. Let's speak it together, please. Is everybody okay? For though I am free from all men. Is everybody there? All right, good. Let's see. speak it together then. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I may win more. And to the Jews I became as a Jew that I might win Jews, to those who are under the law as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law, to those who are without the law as without the law, and not being without law toward God, but under the law toward Christ, that I might win those who are without law. To the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by the means save some. A mindset of a warrior no longer relies on his mind. He relies on the mind of the Lord. He can do anything and become anything at any time. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partaker of it with you. Do you not know that those who run in the race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run thus not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. 
But I do what? I do what? Discipline my body and bring it into subjection. Lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. His, this a mindset of a warrior is fully committed, disciplined, spiritually and physically. Knowing certain foods, and I'm going to share this because this is important. Knowing that there are certain foods and medications that can cause and affect a fogness in the mind. Sugar is a destroyer. It eats the immune system. Some people just can't live without it. But abundance of sugar will prevent you from winning victories in the spirit also. So all the donuts and pastries that you so desire, you need to cut some of those off if you want to have a mindset of a warrior. Your fulfillment comes from the presence of God, not from a donut. Hello. Again, there's nothing wrong with a little. But if you have to have it every day, lunch, breakfast, dinner, you're addicted. So you might be free from drugs and alcohol, then you're addicted to sugar. And it's going to cause a mind fog. Not only that, diabetes and everything else. It prevents you to really overcoming. Amen? So these, as a mindset of warriors, discipline to these things, discerning and avoiding those things that cause a mental fog because it interferes with discernment and detailedness. Does everybody get it? Praise God. For, uh, John 4. Hallelujah. Verse 22. John 4, 22. Now let's go to 21. And Jesus said to the woman, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain or in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, and for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. See, there's a reality with a mindset of a warrior. The reality of God's presence. The anointing and relationship. See, there's a reality of a relationship to the Father as a dad in a relationship with son and daughter. There's a relationship to the Lord Jesus beyond Savior. He's the commander-in-chief. He's the head of the army. He's the one who releases the commands. He paid the price. He's the only one that can open the scrolls and break the seals. Those are all judgments, all commands of war. He is the commander-in-chief and Lord of hosts. He is the commander of all things. And he releases these to the Holy Spirit to aid. He's the aid to the commander. And he's also the aid to the Father. He brings us into the places of training. He guides us. He prepares us. All in preparation to advance the kingdom of Christ by driving out demonic forces and influences of them. This is a mindset or a warrior's mindset. No matter where you go, you are looking behind, beyond the physical. You are looking in the spiritual. What's influencing this place? What's influencing this individual? What's influencing me? Does everybody get this? If you don't have that mindset, you're easily deceived. You're misled. You'll always be led by how you feel instead of truth. In Hebrews 12. Really believe that God has been attempting and establishing warriors' mindsets, trying to get people out of religion. 
Many people serve their denominations instead of the Lord. Hebrews 12, 25. You know, the Lord was reminding me today about the two women. They were sisters. Martha and Mary. And he said, one liked to go out and serve. And the other one sat at my feet. The one that went out to serve wasn't going to make it. The one that sat at his feet was going to. Because sitting at the feet and then being sent is different. Does everybody understand it? See, many people go out to serve, but they're not sent. Oh, the word says do this, do that, but that Jesus sends you. If Jesus hasn't sent you, you're not covered. That's why he says many will come before me and say, Lord, I did this, this, and this, and this. And you say, I don't know you. I never sent you. You did that on your own. But I fed the clothes, I fed clothes and sheltered. I cast out demons. I, did, I didn't send you to that. You did. There's a lack of relationship. Lack of God's voice. Hebrews 12.25. Let's speak it. See that you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he has promised, saying, yet even once more I shake not only the earth, but the, also the heaven. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a what? Consuming fire, waiting on the next command of assignment, not allowing the enemy to distract or interrupt what God is doing. Developing a mindset of a warrior takes consistency. It takes discipline. It doesn't happen overnight. It must be trained. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Hallelujah. A mindset, a warrior's mindset is unwavering. Hates compromise. Doesn't lean on assumption. Waits for absolute. Verse 1, let's speak it. You therefore, my son, be what? Strong in the plan and the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who are able to teach others also. Faithful. That means someone's full of faith. Amen? Faithful is being filled with faith. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And if also, if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to what? The rules or the commands from God. Does everybody understand that? Maintains boundaries of illumination around them. They are always illuminated. These are boundaries of illumination. Always keeping himself disconnected from the foolish affairs of the world and human activity of emotion. But stands as a watchman to protect territorial boundaries assemblies, and assignments. I'm going to say that again. Stands as a watchman or watchwoman to protect territorial boundaries, assemblies, and assignments. You may know someone that God has assigned to go do something. A mindset of a warrior will intercede for that person to make sure that assignment is done and corrected. Exodus 15. 
The mindset of a warrior is always wanting to expand the kingdom of God. Take territory. Think about what a warrior does. What do they do? They go in to take territory. They take the spoil. Amen? Exodus 15. You know, one of the hearts, the desires of the Lord's heart was always disciple. Discipleship, raising up. Raising up what? Warriors. The Word says that Jesus came to destroy Satan's kingdom. He paid the price. He came as a lamb, gentle, willing to lay down his life to be sacrificed. But he didn't take no garbage from anyone. He drove out demonic spirits. But the Bible says he's coming back as the king. He sits now as the king and the commander next to the father. He's releasing his commands and orders and assignments to his people, to fellowships. So that they can fulfill them. But he's developing now in that area, always attempting to develop a warrior's mindset. See, we come into the world and we've had mindsets. Father, mother, amen? Sons and daughters, relationships, there's mindsets to that degree. But even the Word says you can't be my disciple unless you're willing to hate your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, and everything else. A warrior's mindset is not emotionally attached to nothing. Nothing. Only the presence of God in the king. That's what he's emotionally attached to. Doesn't mean you don't love everybody else. Amen? But your emotions will allow access to you and distract you. Is everybody okay? Exodus 15, verse 1. Then Moses and the children of Israel sang the song to the Lord and spoke, saying, let's sing, do it. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has cast into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the dead Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank to the bottom like stone. Your right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has dashed the enemies in pieces. And in the greatness of your excellence, you have overthrown those who rose up against you. You set forth your wrath. It consumed them like stubble. And with a blast of your nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood upon like the heap, and the depths congealed into the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My desire shall be satisfied them. I will draw my sword, and my hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind. The sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? You stretched out your hand. The enemy swallowed them. You, your mercy, have led them. The people whom you have redeemed, you have guided them in your strength to your holy habitation. Hallelujah. Songs of deliverance, victory, and strength are to the men of war, our God. He's known as a man of war. That's our Lord. Me and you must be known as men and women of war. We're fighters. We battle. We don't wimp. We don't compromise. That's a mindset of a warrior. Keeping himself away from the entanglements and affairs of this world. When somebody has something negative to say, you rebuke it. There's no negativity in us. Everything is positive because God works all things to the good. If it's not happening, it's his choice. Psalm 18. 
Aleluia. Psalm 18. Begin to see those boundaries that are illuminated so you don't cross over them. Verse 31. Hallelujah. I almost said verse 3. but <laughs> Hallelujah. He had to be at yesterday morning's meeting. We all were praying in the Spirit. Everybody got a message from the Lord. And almost everybody went to a psalm in verse 3. <laughs> it was powerful. Glory. Verse 31, let's speak it. Who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except for our God? It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He sets me on, my, on high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. You enlarged my path under me so my feet did not slip. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn back again till they were destroyed. Do you understand that? He didn't stop until it was destroyed. Until it was destroyed. We must be the same thing. A mindset of a warrior, no matter what's afflicting them, continues to go after it until it's destroyed, healed, or removed. Verse 38, I have wounded them so that they cannot rise. They have fallen under my feet. For you have armed me with strength for the battle. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. You have also given me the necks of my enemies, so that I destroyed those who hated me. They cried out, but there was none to save, even to the Lord. But he did not answer them. Then I beat them as fine as the dust before the wind. And I cast them out like dirt into the, into the streets. Praise be to God. That's a heart of a warrior. Amen? Praise God. Now, there are times when you just got to forgive and bless. Amen? But you can spiritually attack. In fact, the word says if you forgive and bless someone, coals of fire will come on them. And hope that great conviction. You know, one of the things that I, uh, you know, people always are going, and I shared this yesterday because I was communicating with someone. And, of course, they, I was sharing some things that were displeasing to God that I believe people were doing. And the person said, that's judgment. I said, well, see, so people use the excuse of judgment or race to avoid Conviction. So they don't want to be convicted, so they use this, another card. The race card, the blame card, the you're judging card. Everyone say, I'm a judge. You are a judge. You're to judge fruits of people. And if you don't, you'll be easily deceived. And fruits are, what are their desires? What are their actions? That's what you judge. Because you'll know people buy those fruits whether they are of God or they're not of God, or they're in right standing with God or they're not right standing with God, whether they hear God or not. That's a pretty amazing thing to me. You know, we just got shown by all the people that have been poked. They didn't hear God's voice. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? They didn't hear God's voice. If they did, they would have said, no. That's not of God. Philippians 3. Philippians 3, verse 12. Let's speak it. 
Not that I've already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself as apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are what? Which are what? Ahead. Not allowing the past to influence the present, but maintaining a focus of your call, purpose, and destiny, always willing to deny yourself. Pick up the sword, fight, and wait for the next command. Amen? Verse 14, I press forward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as have are mature have this mindset. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degrees that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. Brother, join in following my example and note those who are so walked as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now I tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Not that they didn't know, but they don't take the fullness of the price Jesus paid. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who set their minds on earthly things. These are people that do not have a warrior's mindset. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lonely body that it may be what? Conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able to even subdue all things to himself. Romans 15. Romans 15, warrior's mindset. Glory. Is everybody there, verse 1? Let's speak it. We then who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproach you will f fell on me. And whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore receive one another, just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ has become a servant to the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made to the fathers and to the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, for it is written. Now, in this, there is a compassion of Christ. Uh, uh, look at a mindset of a warrior is just not aggressive all the time. He's able to shift and become compassionate. Does everybody understand? In that area, to stretch out a hand, to know when someone's weak, but then to know when someone's strong, to be able to re uh, rebuke them. Amen? Compassion but bold against evil, never allowing shame to come, <laughs> never wanting shame to come to the name of the Lord, never. Nor shame to come to our choices. In other words, making wrong choices bring shame to the name of the Lord. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, In other words, you, as a mindset of a warrior, always are protecting the name of God. Second Corinthians four seventeen. Second, oh, I'm in the wrong place. 
I'll be there in a minute. Second Corinthians 4.17. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us. Everyone say working for us. A far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are what? Seen. But at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? They're eternal. We, a mindset of a warrior looks beyond the affliction and the trials to all things knowing that they're all going to work to the good by God, no matter what they're going through. Knowing that there's a training. When things come, it's always, Lord, what are you trying to show me? What are you trying to teach me? Not relying on physical realm, but seeing the spiritual influence and guidance. So we're always waiting on the Lord. Listen, God always brings a way of escape. A mindset of a warrior battles and unless the Lord tells him to go to the next assignment, he waits for the next assignment. And if there's an overwhelming, God always makes a, a way of escape for them. He dispatches his angels. Just like when Jesus got out of the wilderness, what happened? He sent his angels to refresh him. God does the same thing to his warriors. Mark 3. In verse 23, now Jesus called them to himself and said to them in a parable, how can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but has an end. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man, then he will plunder his house. No one can enter a strong man's house without binding the strong man. So wherever you go, you utilize the keys of the kingdom, which is binding and loosening. There are weapons of warfare. You utilize these with precision. Everyone say precision. You just don't beat the air. You attack precision. When you call down destructive fire, that mindset is a location. There are things and strategies that God has set. There's a time to call fire down. There's a time to bind and loose. There's a time for everything in God's kingdom in the area of strategy for each event. Sometimes they'll ask you to, bring, uh, to release confusion. Confusion in the enemy's camp. I released that many times when I went to court. Lord, release confusion in this courtroom so I can escape. And I have. Hallelujah. See, utilizing the weapons of God and utilizing the keys of the kingdom with precision. That is a warrior's mindset. Knowing when and where and how. First John chapter two. First John chapter two, verse fifteen, our famous scripture. Let's speak it. Do not love the world. Or the things in the world, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who, who does the will of God abides forever. Listen, a mindset of a worry knows that the world is passing by. Everything is going to come to an end. But in the meantime, we are on assignment to fulfill the will of God. Amen? To fulfill our call purpose, and destiny. Verse 18, little children is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us, for if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest, that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. 
The mindset of a warrior knows the vitalness of being in assembly with God's presence, getting refreshed under the anointing, and feeding his spirit with the word of God. Go to uh, 1 John 4. First John four verse one. Let's speak it. Beloved, do not believe every person or every voice. Don't believe all every newscast or every doctor as a matter of fact. But test the spirits, test the voices, whether they are of God or not. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. That's many false voices. But this you know, the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. But this we know, the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Hmm. The powers of darkness definitely challenge you, but you're to challenge them. A mindset of a warrior will challenge and test every voice to see if it's of God or not. One of the things is to see if it's of God's timing or not. It's important. And I'm going to close at chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. In verse 18, let's speak it. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who is born of God keeps himself, and the wicked does not touch him. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. I can tell you right now, there are many Christians who do not understand that they've been taken captive in deception, who call themselves Christians. It's amazing to me. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols, from yourself. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I pray, Father, that you will transform our minds into a warrior's mindset with discernment, wisdom, and understanding. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. <laughs>